and Dr. Zach Williams and Flat Creek Baptist Church as we dive deeper into God's Word in this podcast titled New Horizons. Good morning. Thank you for joining me, Pastor Zach Williams from Flat Creek Baptist Church on this New Horizons podcast and radio ministry. It is my greatest joy to join with you each day to dive deep into God's Word together. I just want to take a moment right here to just say thank you to my associate pastor, Brother Caleb Lang, for his diligent efforts over the last week uh, to continue this podcast and radio ministry while I was going on vacation with my family. Uh, I can't say thank you to him enough. Uh, I know he did a great job, and I know you were greatly blessed by the words that he shared with you and the devotions that he shared with you last week. Caleb is a man of God who loves Jesus and walks with him daily. And uh, so I know you were greatly blessed by your time together. Saying that, I do want us to just kind of come back to the Bible today, and I really want us to continue looking at some of the Psalms. You, you know, the Psalms are just are just so beautiful, and they minister to us at different times and in different ways in different seasons of our life. And I personally just. In the mornings right now, I'm actually reading through the book of Ezekiel, but I'm also taking time every day just to read one or two of the Psalms and just just let God just speak through his word into my life um, as I read just through the different Psalms. Now, I want to remind you of something today. So today I'm not actually going to to, to really dive deep into the Bible. I just just want to just kind of give you an illustration to kind of set context of Psalms so that you really understand what what's what's going on in the Psalms and why it's so important. So so just remember uh, when you read the Psalms, and I told you this a few weeks ago, uh, that when you read the Psalms, what you're doing is you're reading the Jewish hymn book. Um, so you know different people wrote these Psalms and they wrote them at different points in their life, and so it's very important for you as you read through the Psalms to find who wrote the psalm, find what the circumstance of life was when the psalm was written, and this will help you to really kind of understand the feeling and the emotion behind the psalm. So just take, for an instance, you have Psalm 51, and we'll look at this as the weeks progress, but you take Psalm 51 for um, example. Psalm 51 was written on the backside of David's adultery with Bathsheba and Nathan calling him out and revealing to him that God had saw all he had done. And so David writes this psalm of repentance. He says, what? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And so, you you know, this lets us in to know why David wrote the psalm, and it helps us to kind of feel the emotion behind it, and then that helps us, that helps to minister to us in times of our own distress and uh, those things. So saying that, uh, today I just want to give you real quickly just just an, uh, a very practical illustration of how uh, of why it's important to know the backstory of some of these psalms uh, and and how it can even uh, translate into our own day. And so I, I just want to draw your attention today um, to one of the popular hymns in our hymn book, and that hymn would be the hymn I Have Decided. To follow Jesus. You know the hymn very well. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. Um, you know, though no go with me, I still will follow. Though no go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, I'll follow him. You know the hymn very well. Well, I wonder, do you know the backstory? Uh, the backstory of this hymn is that an uh, English a missionary had went to a very remote village in uh, uh, in India, and when he gets there, it was just heavily um, unconverted, paganistic, um, many worships and many different gods, and and he goes into this village and he strenuously and diligently works for the Lord Jesus Christ for years and years and years, trying to convert the villagers to Christ Jesus. To no avail. No one ever comes. But finally, just before returning to England for just a time of refreshment and encouragement, he leads an entire family to Christ. 
And so this is just before he is going to head back to England. And, and, and so he finally, this happens and he encourages the family and he says, I will return. Um, he gets on a ship and he sails back to England. And he was gone for a year, two years, and was finally able, after getting support, to make his way back to India. And so he comes back, he sails back, and when he gets to the village, um, he notices uh, that that family is nowhere to be found. However, the entire village is now Christian, but that one family is gone. And so he's wondering what took place. Like, why is the family gone, but now the entire village has come to know Christ? And so he sat down with some of the villagers and they told him the following story. That after he had left to go back to England, the chief in the village had heard that this family had converted to Christ. And so he summons all the villagers together and he calls the family um, who had converted. And he says, you must renounce your faith in public or face execution. The, the, the father, the husband of this family filled with the Holy Spirit, said, I have decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. Enraged at the refusal of the man, the chief ordered the archers to arrow down the two children. And so this man now looks, and he's got his two children standing there, and his two children about to die unless he renounces his faith. And, and what happens? Uh, the, they shoot arrows through his children, and as they, the, the boys lay twitching on the floor, the chief asked the man again, he says, will you deny your faith? You've lost both of your children and you're going to lose your wife too unless you renounce your faith. And the man replies, though none go with me, I still will follow. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. At that, the chief was beside himself with fury and he ordered the wife to be arrowed down. And in a moment, she joined her two children in death. And the chief asked again for the last time, I will give you one more opportunity to deny your faith and live. In the face of death, the man sang, the cross before me, the world behind me. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. And just then he was shot dead like the rest of his family. But with the deaths, a miracle took place. The chief who had ordered the killings was moved by faith of the man and in spontaneous confession as the man lied dead on the floor declared, I too belong to Jesus Christ. And when the whole crowd heard this from the mouth of their chief, the whole village accepted Christ Jesus as Lord. So, so you see, here's a modern day hymn that we sing all the time. And we've sung it so many times that it just seems to just kind of roll off our tongue and we go on. But think about the price that was paid in order for the hymn to be written. And so when we think about that today, you come to the Psalms and you read these Psalms, understand there's more than just words on a page. No matter how many times you've read them, there's meaning behind the words. They're written for a purpose. They're written for your benefit, for your growth, uh, for your maturity in faith. And so as you come to the hymns, or as you come to the Psalms today, I encourage you to dig deep into God's word, to dig deep to find the context and the meaning so that you can understand why the Psalm was written in the first place. Guys, listen, I love you. I appreciate you. And I will see you next time on New Horizons. God bless.